Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us continue the discussion on this uh, centrifugal compressor, what we were talking about is the slip and what that happens because of this rotating frame of reference you have um, these uh, blades are uh, already exposed to the um, uh, rotation and the highly dynamic loading obviously one issue is to tackle with the material because uh, these materials are what kind of blade you have depending on that whether radial, centrifugal. I mean the um, backward leading or the forward leading you have all the centrifugal stresses which are developed. So that is one aspect of it. Now apart from that material perspective you have another issue is that the flow dynamics. So these blades when they are exposed to this rotating frame of reference there are a lot of things happen. And one important thing is that now apart from other forces whatever you talk about the stress and all these you have Coriolis forces and that happens because of this rotation and these blades are rotating uh, along the I mean uh, across uh, frame of reference and you have uh, Coriolis forces and because of that you have different level of pressure gradient and uh, across the blade profile and we will see all these details and which leads to slip. So this is what we were started talking about the slip and so just to give you we have these Coriolis forces and the impellers are bent opposite direction to the wheel of rotation. So you have this. Now there is a counter circulation which is produced inside these blade passages and that because you have this tangential pressure gradient these are the curved blades or whether even if you have a radial blade you have tangential pressure gradient and we will see that um, in next few minutes. And one existence of the thing is the tangential pressure gradient and second is the Coriolis force because of this you get this counter circulation. Now once you have this counter circulation this actually reduces the absolute swell the rotation. So that means the effective speed goes down which lead to the reduction in the power absorption overall pressure ratio actually get hit. So this is known as this is known as slip in centrifugal compressor okay. and the slip factor one can define that let us say epsilon which would be the P theta 2 by u2 or one can write this is absolute swell to exit wheel speed. So that is the ratio which is known as the slip factor. Now we can look at the radial blade what happens I mean that is a simple one we can take an straight radial blade and we can see what happens. So let us draw a simple schematic. So this is a blade. So you have rotation in this direction. So what you have this side is the W, this is R omega. Okay. So if I draw the velocity triangle how it looks like. So it starts goes there, comes there and So this is my sort of let us so 
So, this component is essentially my u which is r omega and um, this component would be d v ok. This component is v prime, this component is v and then I can have obviously this one. So, this one is d v theta ok and we can have so let us say this comes here. So, we this is what omega r plus d r then this component is is there which is w and if this is deviated by this is uh, d theta. So, that is the one which goes back there ok. So, one can it is slightly it has to be rectangle. So, this is what you can have that is fine and there would be two more thing within this this side this is called this d r and this side is w d theta. So, that is what you have. Now, what is d theta? That is omega d t d r is w d t. Now, what we can write is that d v theta equals to omega d r. So, this is the component plus w d theta. So, this is the total which we are writing there are two component. So, that one can write omega w d t plus w omega d t. So, this is an a dot c is the v theta by d t. So, that will give me Coriolis component which is 2 omega w. Okay. Now, this one requires an pressure gradient ok. Now, the radial pressure gradient if you look at, so that it requires a pressure gradient. So, this would be 1 by r del p by del theta equals to minus 2 rho omega w. Now, this um, del p by del theta which is a tangential pressure gradient. Now, the existence of this tangential pressure gradient which means there would be a positive gradient of w in tangential direction. So, which one can see it would be written 1 by rho d p by d theta which is minus d by w square by 2 r d theta which is minus w by r d w by 
d beta. So, this from equation 4 one can write obviously, there are certain a small assumption which are associated there the assuming that all streamlines have the same stagnation pressure in the rotating frame of reference. So, this is one assumption which is there that to get these things. Now, what it will give me 1 by r d w by d theta is 2 omega. So, if I look at these things now as the coriolis forces this is the outlet of the impeller impeller can have I can just uh, read all these things and let us say this is uh, two different side of it pressure suction pressure suction side and this is where you will have V theta 2 and this is where you have W 2, this is where you have V 2 and this direction it would be U 2. So, these are the component that you will have. So, what happens once this coriolis forces disappeared towards the outlet of the impeller that means, this is the outlet side a fluid particle in the middle is unable to continue in a purely radial direction. So, that actually causes a slip. Now, that is one part of it that means, since this coriolis forces they are going to disappear towards the outlet of this impeller the fluid particle which actually stays in middle they are unable to continue. So, that causes the slip which you have already looked at it. Now, dp a del p by del theta. So, that also re relieved towards the tip. So, when you go towards the tip that also relieved. So, what happens the flow accelerates and the boundary layer at the pressure surface is well behaved. So, if I look at this is the pressure side then uh, in this side the boundary layer is well behaved because the del p by del theta the tangential pressure gradient is relieved toward the. So, from this side to this side this actually uh, is relieved. So, flow will so along this side the flow accelerates and the boundary layer is well behaved. But at the suction side on the opposite side this side where the suction side. So, there is a addition of steamoise pressure gradient. So, which means the along this side the boundary layer is tend to separate and that enhances due to secondary flow of the coriolis pressure gradient. So, this means the it tends to transport the slow moving particle towards the surface. So, as a result what will happen is that you get to see a different kind of flow pattern from this side to that side. So, this is what will happen. So, if you look at that. So, this side is your pressure side, this is your suction side. So, this side is well behaved and the pressure gradient is uh, properly behaving. So, flow remains attached the other side actually there is a boundary layer separation. So, the flow particles are moving slowly and this is where you get to see this behavior of the flow pattern inside this passages. So, this what happens when there would be slip when there would be this kind of effect due to correlation forces. Now, we have to make some choices or I would say that it is a designer's choice. Okay. So, you have straight blade that is uh, which means the high Mach number low stresses, but complex diffuser 
design that is one thing. Now, you have backward leaning, then low Mac, you have high stresses. So, that is you have limited operation of P naught by P 1, but it is also different in manufacturing. So, you can have your choice what do you want to have and accordingly design things. Now, there are other components of this uh, centrifugal compressor, one is the I. Here the incoming flow is incoming flow is in the axial direction. Now, what happens at the leading edge of the impeller is a tangential component of the velocity due to blade rotation, which is obvious. Hence, the relative velocity is at an angle with respect to the axis. So, what happens to make the flow enter smoothly a series of guide vanes called inducer is used. So, this actually leads the use of guide vanes. So, that now you can see why these guide vanes are used. I mean effectively what you want, you want your flow to enter to the impeller very smoothly. So, to do that, so you use these guide vanes which actually does that work. So, the other thing is that centrifugal compressors that do not have inducers. So, if you do not use these guide vanes or inducers, they would be very, very noisy that is number one. Now, also there could be possibility of flow separation at the inlet and that can lead to unsteadiness. So, once you have flow separation or unsteadiness, this can lead to also some sort of an instability inside the impeller blade while doing. So, these are the things to avoid that you have these guide vents and these guide vents for some design purposes. So, these are actually designed for a particular operating condition. So, now these are the things that also you need to now, once you design and if things actually go off design condition, then obviously there would be performance reduction. So, that is why, why what you need the guide vanes uh, should have longer angles. So, now you see you have different components. So, uh, and now when you come to the eye and you see all these issues. So, this means the presence of all these actually make the design of centrifugal compressor is extremely difficult. So, that is the bottom line thing the design of centrifugal compressor becomes difficult. You have to take into consideration all these issues which are in place. Now, we will look at the other component which is the diffuser. So, what the purpose of this diffuser? Now, one has to understand from the gas turbine point of view 
the flow which comes out of the centrifugal compressor that goes to the combustor and what always want you want stable combustion. So, to have stable combustion the input to the combustion chamber would be also the flow which goes to the combustion chamber that also has to be smooth and without having too much of unsteadiness or instabilities and all these kind of things. And secondly the combustion not only stable this would happen if the exit of the compressor the flow conditions are also quite smooth. Okay. And third is that the velocity to combustor that also combustor to be small. So, what goes to the combustion chamber that has to be also small. So, the whole idea about this when it comes out of the exit of the um, compressor any compressor whether it is a centrifugal compressor or axial compressor. So, your idea is that you slow down this flow field you smooth out the flow field so that goes to the combustion chamber. So, that is the work which diffuser is does. So, that is the purpose of the diffuser to slow down the flow field slow down the air, slow down the air to a much lower velocity with an additional increase in pressure. So, that is the basic motto of an diffuser. So, you get some sort of an pressure rise, so which will add to the overall uh, pressure rise to the uh, across the compressor and also you slow down these things. So, what it poses once you say that these are my aim or sort of an goal that this poses the challenge that how effectively or efficiently decelerate a flow compared to accelerate it. So, when you try to accelerate that is quite easy or much more easier job rather than decelerating a flow more efficiently. So, this becomes actually bit of difficult. So, it is not that easy. So, and we have already seen I mean from the area rule of subsonic flow velocity decreases in a diverging dark and diffuser flow passage is essentially diverging. Now, the pressure if it increases in the direction of the flow that means you are going to have adverse pressure gradient. So, there would be flow separation due to adverse pressure gradient. So, one has to also keep that in mind if your pressure gradient actually becoming adverse or it increases then um, uh, you will have a flow separation. So, the flow separation would not also help because then you will not get the um, other thing. Secondly, if your if divergence is rapid. So, this may actually result in formation of eddies with consequent reduction in the pressure rise. So, the consequence reduction in the pressure rise. Now, I mean there are a lot of experimentation been conducted other study have been conducted or rather the research have been uh, done. So, typical the divergence angle would be roughly around 11 degree for a rectangular duct for rectangular duct if that is used. Uh, so, the whole point is that the design of the diffuser become important just uh, number 1 
to minimize loss and number 2 smooth flow field at the exit field at exit and properly slowing down the everything. So, that is whole idea. So, the I the single diffuser cannot deselate the entire flow effectively or efficiently over a small distance. Now, one may ask why we need a small distance because the several I mean obviously when you talk about the compressor these are going to fit in the engine. So, obviously the distance and all this these are important. So, I mean there are several diffuser passages are actually used. Now, each passage of the several diffuser uh, is divided by fixed diffuser vanes. So, the leading edge of the vanes are so designed in accordance to the direction of the incoming flow that the air entrance uh, is smooth. Now, we have already seen different kind of diffuser, I mean the picture at the beginning. So, one can have uh, vanless, you can have bent. The thing is that this becomes actually bulky and inefficient and bend it could be having fixed or pivoting bends, it could be cascade already we have seen this picture it could be channel type or it could be pipe. Now, the pipe this was actually I mean I mean just for an information this was proposed by Pratt and Whitney. So, this is quite efficient channel or pipe and if you use pipe you can obtain and compressor efficiency of around 85 percent or so. So, the idea is that the flow has to enter smoothly. So, if I um, and without having any other extra losses. So, just uh, getting a picture of it. So, you can have it 1, 4. So, these are so I have this ok and I can have these are so this is uh, if I take this one as a center this is R1 um, this goes to R2 then this uh, goes to R3 and then finally that goes to R4. So, R4 is the mean. So, that is so this would be the R4 mean radius of diffuser throat, mean radius of diffuser throat. So, now I mean already we have said that the design of the diffuser vein at throat are important. So, um, there is a vainless space between the impeller and the diffuser that we can see this is impeller and this is diffuser. So, there is a vainless space between that. Now, since the air is leaving the impeller has to traverse this gap its direction will not be the same as leaving the impeller tip. So, which is quite obvious. So, if you see these are my impeller. So, when it comes out of the impeller it has to go through this um, vanless this is my uh, vanless gap or passage. So, it is not necessarily that this will follow its proper direction as it comes out of the impeller tip. So, 
to fluid the correct inlet angle of the diffuser vein the flow is in the vanless spaces has to be considered. So, once we want to consider the inlet here this has to be considered and top of that there is no further energy supplied to the air once it leaves the impeller. So, when it comes out of the impeller in between there is no extra energy is provided. So, the angular momentum must be conserved neglecting any other uh, frictional losses. So, this has to be sort of isentropic. Okay. So, you can see this what happens when it uh, goes into the diffuser and the detail uh, kind of um, how one goes about the design related issues, how that affect all this we can discuss, but this is important to know that the flow when it comes out before it goes to the um, uh, diffuser there is a space which is the vanless space, but it may possibly happen that the flow may not uh, retain its direction and all this. So, once we take into account all this calculation we need to take into this one is a calculation. So, what we will do that we will stop here and continue this uh, discussion in the next lecture.